So yet another product presentation from the Devinator. Um, if you guys were in the, the last one, uh, we, we had a bit of a glitch and I figured out what it was about two hours too late. And so um, that glitch was that I had just sat in on uh, Rick Farina's uh, a presentation about hacking Wi-Fi and I said, oh, I'm turning all my adapters off. And I did and, and hosed up my own presentation right next door. Um, and so uh, uh, that's why I couldn't, my, my internal adapter wasn't finding any SSIDs in Tamograph. And I was like, this, this can't be happening. Yeah, it, it happened all right. I just turned my adapter off. That's what happens. It's, it's the physical layer, you know. Ah! So, so anyway, today we're going to talk about uh, ComView for Wi-Fi. Uh, a little bit of a strange name, but they had to do something. Since the original, um, uh, original product was called ComView and it was a wired analyzer, they said, oh, ComView for Wi-Fi. So uh, trying to shorten that down, there's no way to shorten it down. So by having to spell it out in, in emails when you're typing to people all the time, it drives me nuts. <clears throat> Just like all Tamasoft products, they are, um, they are targeted price-wise to kind of a, the, um, the individual, if you will, the administrator without a gigantic budget. So they are very cost-effective solutions. So here I put the price in there again, um, the standard $499 and $199 for an annual license. And if you want VoIP integration, that's a little extra. Uh, we have a, a, uh, a code for those of you, you got it in your, your kit. Um, and they sent, they're supposed to have sent you an email with uh, uh, the, the ability to download from, I believe it's a, uh, Amazon's uh, cloud, your license files. All you do is double click on those license files and they'll associate with the software once the software is installed. So, <clears throat> so anyway, this is a, a wireless protocol analyzer. It's, uh, you know, there's several others in the market, but you know, uh, you'll see some similarities in some areas to Wireshark and things like this, but um, driver support. There is no, no software out there that has even close to the driver support of these guys. They are the reference gold standard for that. They, this is just the 11AC. The 11N page is pages long. I couldn't get it in here without you know, being micro print. And they give you a lot of cool information. If you'll see that uh, we have recommended and we have C Tech Notes. And uh, if, you, if you're using an adapter that says C Tech Notes, see the tech notes, believe me. Um, a lot of adapters out there, they, re they falsely report port noise or they don't give you anything so they have to make something up. There's all kinds of little glitches across these adapters based on source code that they get or not get and so on. But they'll tell you which ones work best. In general, um, Intel is on the blacklist, I've noticed. It, they, they're hard to work with and they don't give you a lot, but uh, for sniffing, not the best adapter. But a lot of the, um, the other ones, the Raylinx and the, the Broadcoms and some of those, those work pretty well. So the one I'll be using today is the Edimax uh, here. It's about 25, 20, well, 25 to 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, you can get them in anytime, anywhere, <clears throat> and they're, they're a recommended adapter. So for the driver tech notes, you can see there's a lot of them. And you know, pick your adapter and expand on it and you can see what the notes look like. Uh, this, this is for Windows. This, um, uh, this software works on just Windows, so there's no Mac on this. And, uh, but they give you a lot of good information. This information is also good if, even if you're using a competing product. <laughs> They've done such a good job of, of noting all this adapter information. Okay, <clears throat> so here's uh, some of the um, features of the product, if you will. The, the um, let's see, are we gonna, concepts and limitations? Yeah, that's right. So these are some of the things we wanna quick, very quickly talk about so we can get into the demo. Um, so good, good driver support um, and some of the things that uh, you have to consider uh, about sniffing in general is if you, your driver has limitations, your sniffing has limitations, right? If you're using a one by one adapter, you're not gonna capture three spatial streams. You need to be you know, close to where you're capturing, reasonably speaking, so that you can, you can hear it. You're not guaranteed um, to capture all packets in Wi-Fi. If you want to capture all packets, get on the wire and get between uh, two devices. You'll get all the packets, at least you hope so. So <clears throat> um, that's important. So not only will you not see all the packets on Wi-Fi, but the, the, um, uh, the faster things go, the, um, the higher the rate, the less you'll see. And so there's a variety of reasons for that. And so they have a, a wired product as well, ComView. Um, they have ComView, which can do the, the wired and um, and something else to consider is the data frames are most often encrypted on Wi-Fi. They should be at least, <laughs> we hope so. And when they are, you're not gonna see that unless it's PSK encrypted and you have the PSK to plug in. And then once you capture a four-way handshake, and since you have the, the uh, PSK, which essentially turns into a PMK, now you can decrypt the traffic in real time. So just some things to note there. <clears throat> so what are we gonna 
uh, what am I going to try to do? Because product demo is not exactly my forte, but we're going to give it a good shot. Uh, we're going to talk about the GUI. We're going to uh, demo several things here. And, um, and we're going to discuss the TCP reconstruction because I'm not going to try to capture a bunch of traffic and reconstruct that and, um, and a few of the, the other useful features. I'll just go ahead and, and throw some of these out here. Remote capture using RPCAP is pretty neat. Some, some adapters out there like our, some access points support remote PCAP. And you can uh, configure those. Let's say uh, one of them is um, AeroHive. I think Cisco's also RPCAP. Um, you can configure for that and pull, uh, pull the data right across the wire back into ComView for Wi-Fi. And they can also do um, uh, Aruba. Aruba has their own proprietary way of doing it. They don't use RPCAP, but they can do Aruba the same way, which is pretty cool. Um, Multi-channel capturing, something I, I uh, call, started calling the triple blendy way back in the day and wrote a white paper on how to do that. Uh, but basically multiple USBs sticking out like, you know, when I finished reindeer, is that what we heard earlier? Um, and so, uh, and walking around, uh, watching uh, clients roam between channels 1, 6, and 11. The problem with this strategy in general is that we're trying to move to 5 gigahertz, aren't we? <laughs> Just nod your head, yes. And, and so, as we're trying to move to 5 gigahertz, we have a lot more than three channels. So, if you want to, to carry around 25 adapters, um, you know, on some kind of massive hub with a, ba a car battery to power it all up, that you'd be my guest. Uh, that's not the way I would do it anymore. Um, and then, of course, uh, VoIP integration is pretty slick. So, <clears throat> so let's um, let's get at it. <coughs> so, a few, uh, just a few things you can do with it. And, and I don't want to read this to you, but um, it's a lot. This is a very full-featured analyzer. It's not new. It's been out there quite some time now. And and so you can see the same uh, list uh, on their website. And of course, you'll get the presentation to be able to download that. So layer one and layer two uh, scanning, of course. When I say layer one, I mean uh, it has uh, integration with the DBX uh, from MetaGeek, uh, a really nice integration there. And you can see a lot of the visual here even without that uh, integration, but when you do, you can see the live spectrum. You can see channel utilization and so on. So here you can see on the, the left side, you've got um, a lot of the, the channel utilization uh, numbers, but on the right side, all the numerics. And even uh, one of my little, I guess you'd say, pet peeves about uh, the frames, there's, uh, once you start looking at the, the types of packets there, you notice you've got data rates and packet types, they even have the contention free there. And so um, Michael Berg, one of the owners and I, went back and forth about the the whole um, uh, displaying the contention-free frame. So if you guys are big fans of PIFs or PCF mode, um, woohoo! No, and and so uh, those are all error frames. So it's it's got a, a lot of really neat um, features in it. My favorite feature is the packet generator. You can capture a packet. I'm going to show you how to do that. Capture a packet, save it as a template, modify it any way you want, and then retransmit that frame. So with, you know, change its source address, its destination, how many times a second uh, you want to send it, um, and so on and so forth, and change any bit in it you want. So you can custom make frames, um, which is really great. You can. Um, you can do quick filters, very very quick filters, right click on something and say show me the conversation and so on. It's pretty slick. Um, early on these guys had TCP reconstruction. So if you, you caught somebody um, browsing, let's say a website, and it was in a clear text, you could capture that series of HTML. You'd right click on any one of those packets and say show me, you know, reconstruct the TCP session and poof! And, and so you, you can see the web page, you can see the email, you can see the FTP username password. It just reconstructs everything right in the window and you can get to see the application layer. It's a pretty powerful tool. Um, has integrated um, VoIP, which is uh, generally speaking is a very expensive uh, application analyzer um, type of function. If you get a de something dedicated to VoIP, it's gonna cost a lot of money. And they've integrated it here for a very low price. And of course, they have all the different kinds of layer one, layer two, layer three stats and such as that. So let's, let's, let's see the product. <clears throat> so I'm gonna uh, leave the spectrum out for just a second and I'll put that in. And the spectrum uh, adapter can be put in on the fly. In other words, software's already running, pop it in and it's working. Pop it out, it stops working. I mean, not the software, the, that feature. So. Uh, so I generally start off um, by showing uh, folks the GUI itself. 
So there's the concept of, of right pane and left pane in this software, in, in all of their software, in fact. And so if you notice here along the right side, you've got these two arrows. Uh, you can barely see them, and that was by design. And so you click on this area, and that panel goes away. The right panel goes away. You click on it, it comes back, of course. And you can stretch it as much as you want by clicking and, um, and dragging uh, in other areas. And there's times you may want to do that. So the same thing happens on the left panel. And depending on what tab you're on, if you notice these tabs, nodes, channels, and so on, depending on what, what you're on, you may or may not have a right and left panel. I always start off on the nodes panel so that I can set things the way I want them with these panels because I know they're there. Okay? And of course, at the bottom, we have uh, spectrum. Now, we'll get this, we'll call it spectrum information, even from the, the regular adapter, but it's nothing like uh, having a, a spectrum analyzer card in the product. That's important to note. So uh, when we get started, uh, I'll show you how that works. So let's not look at that left panel for the second. Let's concentrate on the right panel. If you'll notice, we have scanner and then individual channel here. This is where we're configuring um, <clears throat> you know, how long we're going to be on a channel. Uh, for example, I could, you know, we can up that or down that as much as we want. You can configure which channels that you want. I mean, I always capture on channel 14. No, no, I don't. And, and, then, uh, and then we have you know, a single channel, obviously. It makes it very easy just to have a little drop down here. Okay? So if we want to start off, oops by doing scanner, and we've already got all those configured, okay? And I hit, um, I, I start the capture, okay? This is the nodes tab, and so it's gonna start showing me, uh, let's hope it is, anyway, start showing me the nodes. And it's, nope, wrong one, sorry. And so far, nothing. Um, let's go to packets and make sure it's capturing packets, and it is not, that's why, hang on. Let's see, what have I done to my adapter now? I can't. That's why I don't do product demos. Leave that to systems engineers that are good at their job. There we go. I'm going to take that out now. Okay. Let's go to packets. There we go. Now it's working. Don't know what I did. Who knows? <clears throat> So here on the nodes tab, you can see instantly it, it, it fills in um, all the nodes. Now, what do you get? Think of it as a, um, a super robust scanner, if you will. I mean, we know that uh, there's a lot of really good scanning tools in the market these days. Certainly, um, uh, Access Agility, you know, Zaib that's here, he has a really great one. There's, there's lots of good scanning tools, but this has it in there as well. And this gives you a humongous amount of detailed information. One of the things I'll point you to is the signal column. This is not necessarily intuitive for everybody. It's min, average, and max left to right. So you're looking at the middle one most times. So um, it, it's handy to have the min and max, certainly, but uh, it's not, when we're used to a single number that represents real time, it's not necessarily intuitive. So once you know, you know. So, uh, so just letting you know. And, but you can see here, uh, for example, uh, this, on this first access point, the minimum signal I've seen is neg 59, the average is 50, neg 56, and then the maximum I've seen is, is neg 55. And the data rate, of course, the number of streams, and so on and so forth. It's displaying quite a bit of information. Now scrolling over, you can see there's a lot more information. It's a mega scanner, right, so, which is fantastic, okay? If you'll notice at the bottom, we're getting uh, a display that looks like spectrum analysis. And I mean, it's not really, but it looks that way. <clears throat> now, if we wanted more information, oh, please, God, let this work. <laughs> Let's see. Got a pop in my adapter here. Got my usual ding ding. Okay, and there we go. And so, without doing anything, it's starting to capture the actual spectrum. Can you guys see that okay? Uh, um, it's, you're starting to see the, um, if I can get my mouse, there we go. Ah, go away. Hang on. Turn that off so it's not in our way. So here you can see, um, you know, that normally we had the little square, squared off things with the SSID names, but we're getting a lot of the, the spectrum sampling information there. So that's, that's what we're looking for. And the same thing over here. You can see the sampling from the sweeping uh, of the spectrum analyzer. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So. Uh, when I pop it out, that will go away. And so, so it's, uh, you can do that on the fly. Now when you're, when you're capturing, if you want the spectrum of information, um, you know, it'll, it'll be saved just like the, the regular data. 
So most folks want to look at um, uh, the packets, go straight to the packets, but the whole point of having nodes and being able to look at whether it's uh, this uh, Apple device is connected to this uh, access point and so on, is to interpret for you. In other words, to help you understand what you're looking at. And if you had to go look through 10 million packets to try to figure out who's associated to who, you'd be there a while. So it's doing all that work for you. And Going to the channels, to actually there's uh, one more thing we can show here, and that's channel utilization. So it's sweeping across all these channels. If I put this on, let's say, um, channel uh, 36, it's only gonna show me on that left panel the channel utilization for 36. It's only gonna show me what I'm capturing. So, um, so here you can see we're sweeping across all the different, the bands and the channels, and here's what we've got. Now if we wanna uh, drag this out and really look at it, we can do this, okay? All right, and so, I'll drag that back, now, and I'll make it disappear. Now, if you go to channels, um, here you can see the statistics of any given channel. <clears throat> Let's pick on one like six, it's you know, fairly, you know, not really busy, but you know, give or take. You can see all the packet types, <laughs> including ones that I don't even wanna see, which they're, by the way, they're gonna uh, put a feature in there about uh, not, um, not showing contention free. If you can see that we have CFNs and CFACs and CF polls and, and so on, those are error frames because we never use those frames um, anywhere at all. So um, they're misinterpreted. In other words, we caught a piece of a frame and thought it might be this because of what we caught, um, what we captured, okay? So that's, those are not accurate anytime you see CF anything. But here, you can see the different phi's um, and so forth, we don't, or so far we don't have any, any more down there, higher rates. So um, see the statistics, the number of packets, bytes, and so on. And you can see signal level and things like that. When you so select certain channels, you can see uh, certain information over here as well. Okay, how much, how much throughput, the packets, the signal level, and, and on. Um, they give you a lot of um, additional features here. Um, you know, if you're, you're capturing uh, outbound connections and you can see the IP information because it's unencrypted, remember it has to be unencrypted for that, um, it shows you who it is. And you can even send this over to some of their other products. Uh, there's things like Smart Who Is and, and things like this they have, and they've integrated these products pretty well. Some of those products are either free or very, very cheap. Call it, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 bucks. So getting to the, the packets themselves, it, it sets up a bit like Wireshark, um, in my, my opinion. If you notice down here on the left, the way that I like to view it, and, and a lot of people are different than this, but you've got uh, multiple options here on how to view. So if I want to switch it to like this, um, uh, you can. And of course, now I'm going to go find it <laughs> and switch it here and so on. But I like my decode to be on the left pa panel. That's just me personally. And I don't like the, the hex at all, so I try to get rid of that thing. It's, it's, I get it as low as I can. And so now it, it makes it easy to scroll through the, uh, for me, uh, scroll through the packets here. Okay, we're still capturing, but so we'll stop that for the heck of it. Now, um, I can right click and now I don't know what this is. Um, um, it's, it's an HTTPS page, so it's not like I'm gonna get, get a whole lot because I don't, yeah, so I don't, I don't have the, um, uh, the certificate or anything. So it's HTTPS, but uh, I don't look like there's any HTTP, just straight HTTP, bummer. So, but you can right click on, on a conversation that's TCP and say reconstruct TCP session there. Um, and what this is gonna do, provided it can, like it's let's say POP3 or uh, SMTP or it's HTTPS or anything that's not encrypted at the application layer, we're gonna be able to put that together and see the application layer. It's in a window, it's pretty nice. You can quickly filter uh, by MAC address, IP or port, um, for example, um, I'm clicked, right now I'm clicked on um, you know, this uh, source MAC of A3AC, and if I want to quick filter by MAC, it says between A3AC and that Apple device that it's talking to, or, so in other words, anything, show me anything between those two, or show me anything from that one, or anything to that one. So that's a pretty quick way to build a filter. Uh, you don't have to go, I mean, they've got very advanced ways to build filters too, but if you just wanna see that conversation and get rid of everything else, just right clicking on a packet is the way to do it. Very simple. And there's other, others as well. You can do the same thing uh, for an IP conversation, provided you can see the IP addresses, which means unencrypted. You can copy the packet or save a packet. I love this. So let's say we wanna um, save the packet, okay? If you'll notice, let's see, what kind of frame? Let's get a beacon. Um, where's me a beacon? Come on, gotta be a beacon here somewhere. Oh, maybe I filtered out beacons. Uh, nope, yes I have. See the ignore beacons? So let's recapture and get some beacons. Just for fun here. Come on, in here. Why is it not scrolling? 
it stopped capturing it. Huh, that's weird. Let me clear the packet buffer. It stopped capturing. That's what it did. One second. I think when I, maybe when I um, put in the Y spy and took it back out, maybe it caused that problem. I don't know. I'll show you why I want to do a beacon. Come on. There we go. What in the world? It's on scatter mode. Yep. Hmm. Don't know why. I have to pull my adapter out. One of the things I like about this, <clears throat> if you guys are familiar with changing out adapters, while I'm doing this, I'll show you. Under Device Manager, if it gets messed up, I just delete it, literally right click on it and tell it to, to uninstall it. As soon as I plug the adapter back in, it comes back and, and then the software makes sure that it's the right adapter on the way in. Not sure why, why it's not capturing. One more time. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, let's stop. Surely we've captured a beacon. There we go. So we're going to save, um, or, or yes, yeah, copy packet. Same, I actually want to save the packet. Save the packet. And here we have an NCF format, which is their native format. So we'll just call it beacon for the heck of it. Um, okay. And let's open up one of their tools called the packet generator. This is my favorite part of the software. So what is this? This, this is a a uh, tool for sending, using the same adapter, sending frames that you've either captured or customized, captured and customized. So you can see here, I've got some templates already. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the beacon out of this one, and I'm gonna put that other beacon in here. The way you can do that um, is, let's see, I'm gonna minimize the software here. Go over here to my, where's my, there it is, the beacon. I've got my beacon uh, file there, and I'm just gonna drag it right in here like this, poof. And then I can name it, I'm gonna name it beacon. Done. Okay. You can you can uh, right click and send it there as well. I believe. Let's see. Um, send packet. Um, just selected, and it, it'll it'll go directly in. So, um, or, or yeah, it it goes ahead and selects it here. If you wanted to go ahead and start transmitting, send doesn't mean send to the uh, the packet generator. It means send on the air. So I usually save it as a template. So let's let's uh, select the, that one, and now we can come in here and change any field we want to. We can um, you know, start sending out a customized beacon with customized fields and um, just to confuse clients, say. Um, <laughs> there's all kinds of elements in here that we can really screw with. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of frames, in fact, like dauth. This is the one that people use the most. They'll capture a dauth frame, they'll make one. They'll go to, let's say, an access point and they'll say dauth the client. Well, how does it do that? It sends a dauth frame. You capture the dauth frame, you save it as a template, now you've got it forever. And then all you have to do is tra uh, change the, the, the source and destination and, and say, I want to send this once per second or something like that. So if you open the packet generator and look at that, um, where you go, packet generator, you can see down here, you can send continuously at a certain rate. Um, um, but I want to send it, let's say, um, yes, do it continuously. And let's say a packets per second, we'll just do one. And then we, um, and if this were a, um, let's say a deauth frame, then we change the source and destination and hit go. And every second it deauths. And by the time it can try to reauthenticate and and um, and reassociate, it's already been kicked off again. So it just completely kills that. You can also do the same um, by spoofing an access point. If you think about that, you, you, you spoof the access point and you send it to the broadcast. Um, uh, nobody's going there, right? Nobody's going to connect. So. When I, when I first asked uh, Michael to, uh, Berg to build this, he said, there's only one reason you'd need that. I said, yeah. He goes, I'm on it. <laughs> Love this guy. Um, and so, <laughs> don't ask no questions, just build the code. So, <clears throat> all right, so going back to, um, yeah, let's see, what was it? Oh, so you've seen the spectrum integration, you've seen saving a frame and, and as a template. Uh, quick filter, if you know, showed you quick filtering, I want to make sure I hit them all. And um, uh, let's see, the um, hmm. yeah, nodes. Yeah, not, 
Well, before, before I forget anything, because there's a whole long list of stuff I wanted to, um, to go through. Oh, yes, standard filtering rules so, and alarms. That's right. So here we've got um, the more advanced filtering. Instead of quick filtering, which is, by the way, quick, uh, this is the unquick filtering. Maybe they should name it that. And so <clears throat> you can turn on, if you, you see here, you've got uh, formulas. If you want to write formulas, I'm not that guy, but I'm sure Rick Farina is. Um, you enable that, and you can write a whole formula here. And, and it's using uh, standard Boolean logic. But if, if you want to, um, we'll call it simple, but I, I don't see it necessarily simple. Uh, enable Ethernet protocol rules. So you turn this on, and now you can click these. Um, you can come over here and do the same over here and turn those on. And if you go up to, that's the protocols themselves, and then you've got MAC addresses, and um, over here, to, from, or both, and you plug that in and add it. It's important that you remember to turn these back off if you're not using them, because these filter what you're capturing. <laughs> Very important. If you wonder why you're not capturing a certain kind of frame, make sure you didn't leave one of these on. And you can save these rules as well. Uh, that's a pretty handy thing. If you have to make them up every time, it'd be a pain. And you can do the same on ports, and on and on it goes. And you can uh, uh, filter based on strings. If you're, let's say, for example, your um, uh, filtering at a, uh, or, or capturing at a hotspot, and everything's in clear text except for the smart people who use HTTPS and, and all the other secure applications, maybe you want to uh, search for the, the uh, string of password or something like this, right? And just capture everybody's passwords. You could. I'm not saying you should, but you could. And so on, right? <laughs> So, so what questions so far do we have? No questions at all. That rocks. <laughs> About that time, oh. hands. Oh, my man. What's up? So, was was the uh, back of the, one of the first or second screens you showed uh, yep. the signal strength? Was one of those the, uh, the min, max, and median, or was yes, one of the average? The signal right here. Right. Yes, yeah, so uh, that is uh, left to right, min, average, max. One of the least intuitive parts of this, this piece of software. Once you know, you know, right? But it's the, why do we have three numbers again? Um, I mean, it's in the help file. One of the, one of the best things about this software to me is the help file. I think it's F1. Uh, these, yeah, it is, F1. Um, the, the help file is, uh, it's written by Kiwi. Um, uh, they sort of speak English. Um, it's kind of, kind of, yeah, it's kind, of, it's, uh, it's kind of like Brits they, and Australians. They kind of speak English too. Um, but uh, the, the documentation is extraordinarily good. So anytime I'm asking um, these guys about, uh, hey, how does this work? Have you read the documentation? No. <laughs> It's in there. <laughs> Dang it. I'm going to have to take time to read all the documentation. It really is quite that good. It's well written. It's very concise. I mean, even I can figure it out. So, um, and the support of the product has just been extraordinary. I mean, you know, when you ask even for a feature like a packet generator, they're like, all right, we can do that. No, I'm not saying they're going to do everything you ask for, but they are very, very responsive. So I've been very happy with that. So I, I use this product. This has been my go-to analyzer for more than a decade. I mean, it, it's literally that good. So um, what else we got? Well, I was going to ask if you could use that to measure your walls. From you can, absolutely you can. And one of the things I would do if I were using this to measure walls, um, I've uh, personally, I've, I've been using a, um, a handheld appliance for that. Uh, but, but I'll say that I would make sure to use an adapter um, that, that they uh, have accurate noise and signal and all that stuff. When I say accurate, I mean, um, I don't mean accurate as in calibrated. I mean accurate as in um, it's measurable. Because a lot of, uh, even though they say the packets don't lie, the analyzers do. Uh, because the drivers do. And that's been a, an old saying that, that if you've been in the, the protocol analysis industry very long, or say that you've been doing that very long, um, it's always the packets don't lie. But the problem is the adapters will make up values for things like noise and feed it up to the application and, and the value's bogus. And so uh, when, I, when I showed you on the PowerPoint how their driver, they have the driver tech notes, read them, make sure if you're going to use it for something is, that needs to be fairly accurate. I and mean, even though you're making a relative measurement, you take your, um, your analyzer and your signal source, you put them side by side, um, and then you're gonna put them on the sides of the wall when you're doing wall measurements uh, like that, you at least want the thing to be not feeding bogus information because it probably varies enough when, it, when it's feeding correct information, but when it's feeding bogus information, there's no telling what it's gonna give you. So, um, so th they will tell you when that's the case. Does that answer your question? Okay. 
Anything else? Uh, there is a question on calibration. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Uh, it's not, not calibration. <laughs> I have a question about a packet uh, replay part. So is there any adapter actually uh, will work better for packet replay? So far, they've all worked fine. Um, that, if, if it didn't work on that, they will tell you in, um, uh, in those notes. And I can minimize that and bring it back up, but one second. Where did I put it? Oh, yes. Nope, that's the wrong one, this one. Yeah, so, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, so here, they, if the packet generator uh, won't work with a specific one, and that goes for any other feature in the product, it'll be right here every time. I mean, without fail. They are really good about keeping this up. Okay. So if there's a, any feature, any kind of um, reading, you know, that you're worried about, the noise, or the signal level, whatever, it'll be noted. Great. Another quick question here is, uh, can we replay on both 2.4 and 5, or is there any limit here? No limits. No, you can replay okay. on both. It's, to me, it's the best... Um, Okay, uh, black hat type Wi-Fi wi tool that you could have. I mean, you can cause all kinds of hell. And, and it's not just the disrupting, it's also the manipulating with a packet generator. You can cause clients to do certain things or cause uh, access points to react in a certain way. Um, let's, you know, let's say, for example, you wanted to, to um, level the entire um, place, the throughput across the entire enterprise. You think, what, you can do that with one little? Yes, you can. Simulate a B access point. Oh. Know what? Yeah, I know, right? Um, Ripple. This one, uh, because the, if you hadn't read my white paper from like, I don't know, 04 on protection Ripple, it still applies today. And so you turn on a B access point, and the next, you, the next, all the ones that can hear it, everyone that can hear it has to turn on protection, which causes the next one to turn on protection, and it goes, and all of a sudden, you're at about, you know, call it 40% of, uh, you know, 50% of throughput capacity across the entire, you know, uh, 2.4 spectrum. And so, um, not that we care about 2.4 anyway. So, but, but yeah. Hmm? yeah, it's not dead. It's just really sick. It's very sick. It's um, uh, <clears throat> uh, another comment on the the packet replay. Yeah, I clicked on it for mine. <laughs> it comes up and says your car doesn't have this functionality, and it's an Intel seventy two sixty. Because Intel, like I mentioned earlier, Intel's the. It's been my experience and theirs as well. That Intel doesn't want to play nice. It's not that Intel cards are bad. They're not. It's just that. Um, Intel doesn't like to uh, give up source code or work when things are broken. I've worked with Intel myself, so this is first-hand experience, when, when you know something is broken about their driver and you ask them to just participate and they refuse flatly. We're Intel, we can do what we want, period. And so, okay, well, <laughs> that, that's fine. We just won't use it for sniffing or, or stuff like that. We'll use it you know, for regular uh, connectivity and that's, that's okay. So, yeah, so that's a good, good question. Okay. So um, that's, <clears throat> that's it in a, in a basic nutshell, but um, there are lots of additional uh, features in this thing. You know, for example, VoIP, if you want to set up um, uh, all the, the VoIP features, you've got uh, geolocationing um, and so on. You can have it automatically uh, capture up to a certain amount of RAM and then dump it, dump it off to the hard drive, dump files off to the hard drive. Um, and you can see here how you can um, you know, move the amount of RAM that's being used. You've got statistics. Um, let's see if I can find that one. That's, I'll get it here in a second. Yeah, statistics, there we go. Uh, st st uh, statistics, you can see um, a variety of things. The protocols being used, uh, the IP protocols at, at uh, layer four, and all of the sub-protocols, the application layer protocols, for example, all of this is in here. And, and, and of course, you can make it bigger where you can see it better. Um, and so they are parsing a lot of information across these guys. Let's see, matrix, there we go. Um, so this, this is a really cool feature here. I think we, we first saw this type of feature in uh, wild packets way back in the day. I mean, like, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and these guys uh, made us something that looked very, very much similar. So um, that was actually pretty needed. But uh, in fact, I've got one captured. It's about 100 megs at home we call Yarn Ball. Um, that's actually the name of the, the capture because it was captured at a, at a trade show event and it makes this, this look like a yarn ball. It's literally just pff, thousands. So any questions on, on this? How do we get to that again? Oh yes, so you go to, uh, I think it's view statistics, view stats here, and, uh, and this gives you all your application layer and so on. Okay, did I finish a little bit early? I think I might have. Oh. What's your suggestion for analysis in the 
I'm sorry, again? What was your suggestion for roaming analysis on five gigahertz? Oh, there's a good question. So there's a variety of ways to do that, but my personal favorite is to use uh, a dedicated sensor for this. In other words, not walking about trying to chase a client. Um, but let's say, for example, I had some dedicated uh, sensors, and instead of having just nonstop scanning, if I want to do roam testing, I have those things watch a, you know, uh, a set of channels. Maybe they, this one has three, this one has three, or something like that in an area. Uh, so I know what my APs are in a given area, right? And so if, even if I put a sensor saying monitor channel 52 and monitor channel 44, because those are the only APs in that area that the client could possibly roam to, right? And those sensors all come back into a, let's say, a management system, if you will, that can watch a roam. Um, that's the way I'd prefer to do it. And that way, you know, the sensors can go back to doing scanning when you're not trying to do specific troubleshooting of a roaming problem. But when they, when they are, when you want them for that, you have the sensors do that. They can hear a, a broader area. Uh, they can be programmed for a single channel. You can have however many sensors you need. You know, do you need five, six? Okay, put, use sensors to do that. And, and uh, the sensors are useful for more than just that one function. They're useful for a lot of things. So I'm a big fan of using dedicated sensors for that rather than trying to turn my laptop into some kind of multi-horned, you know, can you imagine? I mean, but you do have the limitation, uh, I won't say limitation, or the, um, yeah, it's kind of like that. You don't have to scan 25 channels trying to chase a client when the APs around this area, there's only three or four that the client could possibly roam to. That helps a little bit. Does that make sense? Yes. Is it on the sensors? Uh, okay. Well, mine. <laughs> uh, my question is, is on the sensors. How do you feel about using the APs that also can do, you know, the monitoring of sensing and stuff mm -hmm. instead of using dedicated sensors? Mm -hmm. So it'll, the answer would depend on what the, the sensor slash AP is capable of. If, for example, uh, uh, if I wanted to... Uh, just uh, maybe use a basic or, or look at basic roaming, maybe the AP would do that just fine. And uh, if I wanted to look at a, you know, five or six hundred KPIs, you know, where I'm, I'm gathering everything from beacon stuck problems to retransmission problems and, you know, and, and statistics, um, I need something that is dedicated to whether you're talking about a security sensor or performance sensor, something whose system has, you know, many, many times what you would find in your average infrastructure uh, scenario. Infrastructure guys are focused on connectivity and throughput and things like, and roaming and things like this, right? That's what they're good at. They spend very little time on performance and, and uh, security. That's why there are such a thing as dedicated, dedicated WIPs, dedicated uh, performance monitors that are much more robust in that. So it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to do a little, and that's something that the APs and the controllers are really good at, I'd stick with them. I, and you can overlay yourself, by the way. Anytime you hear WIPs overlay or performance uh, sensor overlay, um, you, you know, you have to think, well, can I just do that with my own access points? Yes, you can in most cases. You know, it just depends on, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. Does that, does that help? Yes, thank you. I hate uh, giving dep it depends answers, but it, it does sometimes. Just curious if there's a way to uh, save and um, open something after, you know, you leave a site or, you know, kind of take something with like you. Like saving a packet trace or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah, of course. yeah just yeah, to yeah. be able to analyze it after yes, the fact, maybe dig absolutely. in deeper. File. Um, you can say save nodes, save channels, save packets. Oh, and by the way, here's a, a little thing about this software while we're talking about this. Thank you for your question. Um, you, each of these is separate here. So I can, if I say clear, clear what? I can clear the nodes tab. If I clear nodes, notice my packets didn't go away. I'll clear my channels, my packets didn't go away. Um, but if I go back over to nodes and channels, since I'm not capturing in the moment, they're gone. So each one of these, um, call it um, uh, the nodes, the channels, any, any of these tabs, these are individual functions and they, are, they, they react separately. So, so here, let's say I wanted to um, uh, save my packet log. That's what they call it here is packet log. So we'll save it and we'll just save it as um, packets. Okay. And I'll close the software. Okay, and I'll come over here to that packets file and say open with, and I can, and if I know that this, this is ComView for Wi-Fi, it was saved with a Wi-Fi analyzer, I want to open it with ComView for Wi-Fi. ComView is a wired analyzer and would recognize some packets, maybe not all. So I'm going to open it with ComView for Wi-Fi. Now it's going to open the software and then open a packet log viewer. 
There we go. So you've got the, the log viewer here. Notice that the log viewer is separate from the application itself. Okay? And you can do all the, you know, the, the uh, fine packet, uh, filtering, quick filtering, all that stuff is done, can be done here the same. It's just a separate application, if you are, a separate piece of the application, if you will. So you can still do all the same things, save, uh, save a single packet, uh, re TCP reconstruction, and so on. All the decoding, all in the log viewer. Does that answer your question? Yeah, you can do the same. So if I were to capture, let's say, go to the nodes tab. Oh, come on, don't do this. Oops. Why does it do that? My computer, what in the world? I've got this thing on a little extender. Maybe it's the cable causing the problem, probably is. Um, so, for Wi-Fi. let's try this once more. The problem I have is the computer is so small, I've got two USB ports, and both of them are in the way of the, 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 uh, the adapter to go to the screen and my power adapter. So I have to have them on extension cables, and that's not a good thing for me. Um, okay, so nodes, there we go. So if I want to, now that I've captured some nodes, I can save the, uh, you know, when I save the, the log, or, or you know, log of the nodes, I do the same here, okay? And, and it's gonna, it saves an HTML set of a packet log file, so we'll say uh, nodes. Come over here to nodes, wherever, it, there it is. There we go. Come on Windows, get rid of that. There we go, and there's all my nodes information, okay? So it just saves in a different format, but pretty nice format actually. <laughs> Any additional questions? One more. I've got a single gotta have feature. Hang on. I'm sorry, what was that? Is there a single gotta have feature in this product over what you'd see in an OmniPeak or a, or, or a Wireshark that yeah, the makes this? If I were to pick one, it'd be the packet generator. I can't live without it. Um, I, I, I use it for a lot of stuff. And it, I use it for testing. I use it for pen testing. I use it for... Uh, just screwing with things. I just, I'm in that feature all the time. So um, I like the nodes tab a lot. Um, you know, and I think you probably get a lot of the same information as some of the other ones. It just gives you a lot of, a lot of information quickly. It's a pretty good scanner. Um, I think ease of use, um, a, a complete newbie can use this one in literally in a day. You're completely familiar with everything in it. And so it's not a, it's not a week or two or three learning curve. It's, it's a part of a day learning curve. So the usability and even when I hadn't gone back and messed with it in a while, I opened it up and it just seems like riding a bike. So I like that part about it. So that's, that's my particular thing. I'm sure there's other folks, but you know, there's, um, there's kind of periphery things like support. Support is just, it's instant. Uh, you can measure it in minutes or hours that they, they respond and they're, they're helping you out. The documentation is really good. So it's a variety of things, but the packet generator is my I gotta have. And, uh, Tim? We got one right, right up here. Is the USB adapter that we got in our bag? Is that yes, the Edimax. Let me go ahead and pull that out. Since so, um, the little Edimax AC twelve hundred little guy that you guys got. This this is my favorite adapter for this software. Um, and uh, as far as the, you should have gotten an email and you download the files, um, install the software, make sure you upgrade the software. There's an automatic over the web upgrade. So just, I think it's like help and then run an upgrade. It pulls it all down, installs it for you automatically and does the upgrade. And um, I see, then, then the files that you download uh, via email, those are uh, licensed files. So how you license this stuff isn't a code, it's a file. And, and you can open up the file and look at it. And, but it, you just double click it and it licenses the so software automatically. It goes, calls home, activates, you're done. So it's a you know, two minute process. Yeah, this is a good, ad good adapter. It's less than 30 bucks on Amazon. You, you can't beat it. Right here behind you. Or save. Can it open and save PCAP files? Uh, yes, and it can save in different formats as well, not just its own, own format. There's a whole variety of formats that it can save as and open. Okay. Yep, including the PCAP, yep. All right, wow, there's a lot of questions. I thought you had no questions. Okay, we'll call, a, we'll call it quits on this one for, for now. Thank you. <laughs>